Hello everybody, welcome to the official round of 32 preview for the World Championship. Very exciting, you can see it all there. The entire bracket has been set. Every round will follow this structure. Um, I must say we've had the live draw. It was streamed on Nacon's channel, Twitch TV. I'll put that on my YouTube as well, so you may have already seen that on, on YouTube or on Twitch. But uh, what I'm going to do here is look at every matchup, every team, and try to do a little bit of predictioning. So let's start off with Wenteros versus Zahu. Um, so here's Wenteros's team. I can tell you that Wenteros is Russian and qualifying through the Ruby BL on PC. And funny enough, he's called himself Ruby BL Champions. He's got a team somewhat similar to mine. Um, you know, just the solid positionals, Witches and Dark Elves, Four Guard, Wrestle and Wrestle, three assistant coaches in that post. So very similar to the one that I went. I like the solidity of Blodge and Rod, right? And obviously he's, he's you know, came to the same conclusion. He won every game in the group stage. Very strong player uh, with a very strong team. So... Uh, that's pretty good for Westeros. Westeros, not Westeros, of course. That's nothing to do with the Blood Bowl IP. Wenteros, uh, he's up against Zahu. Zahu with Skaven here. I can tell you that Zahu was Spanish and qualified on PC through the Butter Cup. And he's gone for, you know, lots of, All the Skaven team are similar, right? They've all got 12 or 13 players. They've all got, you know, an Apple or not. They've all got two or three rerolls. They've and and then like the skills that you're looking at is a leader thrower, a wrestle gutter, a block gutter, a, a strip ball gutter, and a sidestep gutter, a juggernaut rat ogre, a guard blitzer, and then another guard blitzer skill. So he's obviously dropped the wrestle there. And you've got to drop one of those, right? You only get you only get seven of the eight. So he's dropped the wrestle, and he's taken tackle instead of mighty blow or guard or whatever right you, you you've got a bit of flexibility on the second blitzer skill so it's a completely you know pretty much standard skaven build i don't i don't know what the standard seven build is but this is a standard skaven build and you can see that he won two lost one in the group stage i think the racial matchup does favor dark elves in this so i'm gonna say I'm going to put that down as a Winteros win, I'm going to predict. The format, by the way, for these games, I think is brilliant. Incredible format. It is a best of two, where if there isn't a winner, they will play a third game with a tie break, uh, you know, overtime format tie break and then kicks. So, you know, if you win and draw, you've won. Uh, that's why it's not a best of three, right? Because with a best of three, if you... If you won and draw, you could lose the last three. So it is a best of two. Um, a win and a draw will win it for somebody. If either side, if like both sides win one, or both games are a draw, then it will go to the third match. So I think that's a fantastic format that you know smooths out the RNG a bit, which you know is a problem with Blood Bowl. Um, you know, so like we, we saw through here, like you know, mostly the better players won the groups and finished second. And the, mostly, you know, the not so good players were eliminated and stuff. But, you know, there's lots of dice. Lots of things can happen, certainly in the single game. So I like that there's something to smooth that out. Right, second match, we've got Surveillance versus Matabolitos. So looking here, we've got Surveillance. And he's got exactly the same thing, right? Skaven, he's dropped Wrestle. And he's taken Mighty Blow for the Blitzer. He stormed his group. Three games, three wins. Um, look, you can say that the look is part of what makes Blood Bowl a perfect game, right? Surveillance is Swedish, qualified on the PlayStation, PlayStation League Coalition. And uh, he's actually, oh, but it was the PlayStation World Cup Open is how he qualified. So actually he's one of two PlayStation qualifiers, which is, you know, that's kind of cool, isn't it? Um, bless them. Bless their cotton socks. Two two PlayStationers got to play with the big boys. Just a joke, right? Mata Belitos here. He's up against with Undead. I think Undead struggle a little bit into Skaven. They're really slow, and uh, that tends to get exploited unless they absolutely slaughter the uh, rats, which sometimes they do. So Mata Belitos is Mexican, qualified through the FMBB qualifier. 
Um, how do you do in the groups? 1-1-1. One, one, one. So not a great record. And he's got a couple of guard mummies, which isn't great against rats. The two tackle is quite good. Um, two skeletons I don't like ever, pretty much. But I guess against Skaven, right? A bit of speed is, if anything, if there's any match for this to be a bit better, it's this one. So fair enough. And then uh, he's got a block and he's got a strip ball, which I am not a fan of that at all. So uh, I'm definitely giving the advantage in that match to surveillance. Right, um, now I've got Frankie 129 up against Slade Black Mage. If you bear with me, I will try and find these guys. Right, Frankie is undead. So undead, choose between like basically skilling the ghouls or skilling the mummies generally you'd know you don't get to skill both of them too much because you probably want to skill your whites he actually has taken a skill off the whites double guard double block wrestle so somewhat unusual skilling of the team here one tackle white and uh two zero one record for frankie and i can tell you that frankie is Spanish and qualified through the PC NBB. And oh, he's up against Slade Black Mage. Slade Black Mage actually didn't qualify um, in second. He finished third in his group, and Gabias couldn't play the knockout stage of the competition. So his record is 1 0 2. That's why he's here with this record and he's american and he qualified through the trbbl which uh, is funny enough the same league j leave qualified through isn't it i believe so there you go um he's got humans which i don't think are a great race he's got five guard which is okay a leader thrower block catcher 13 players apple four rerolls the four rerolls is nice isn't it but the problem is and then with a leader as well, maybe he's don't need a leader on top of that, but fair enough. Five rerolls can help to make something happen, but uh, it's going to be a really tough ask for him, isn't it? I think, I think chances are Frankie takes that one. And then we've got Strider versus Drago. Strider, kind of the defending champion, right? Not actually because this was the season two finals that he won. And this is not, <laughs> this is the world championships, but it's, you know, it's the spiritual successor. So Strider absolutely bossed his group, three wins out of three. And he's got Wood Elves. We've got a strip ball, you have to have a strip ball. It, this is probably the most standard build, except he's taken size up instead of tackle, right? But you can take sidestep, tackle, or frenzy on this one. This is They're all pretty standard. I actually like sidestep the most, probably. Leader, thrower, to give him the third reroll. Uh, tree, because most people take the tree. Couple of catchers, and then two dodgers and two wrestlers. So that's a pretty good roster. Obviously, he's a really good player, Strider. And Switzerland he's from, and he qualified from the season three official playoffs the problem here is i'm forgetting who they're playing instantly drago <laughs> okay it's i'm sorry for the continuous checks but hey look at least you can also keep up if you've forgotten who he's playing um drago lizard men this is a tough tough draw for the lizard men up against strider with wood elves he went one 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 in his group and Yep, he's got five block and a guard. That's a bit unusual. You normally would see six block. And he's gone, they've, all, they've got the choice of 12th player or a third reroll. He's gone for the 12th player, you know, maybe with overtime in mind. So that could be good, but um, it, it's really bad. No, we had a draw at Elmine. There was a draw on Nacon's channel and it was a very fun little draw. I got a little bit unlucky as you will see later or now if you look at the bottom. And um, so after that little quarter, I would put Strider as the absolute, you know, 
one of my so you know this is the thing you know what do we call these people i've got my like chosen favorites funnily enough they're all people in the super league so let's say super he, he's my super choice there strider to get through to well the semi-finals eh? he's the one out of the eight that i uh, that i think is absolutely super right <laughs> now we've got moving down from that we've got rock versus yatsik so, Rock is here, and he's got Orcs. I can tell you that Rock is Spanish and qualified through the Season 4 official ladder. Oh, I forgot to say about Drago, didn't I? He's Belgian and qualified through CPC. Sorry, sorry, Drago. I, it's actually quite hard to do all of the switching scenes and thinking of everything and talking all at the same time. Right, Rock, Orcs. Three guard biggins, mighty blow tackle. I think that's pretty standard, you know, the mighty blow on the tackle. I'm not a fan of it. I just don't think you need the tackle, but really um, different on tabletop with Amazons. But, and you know, there's lots of wood elves and stuff. I just, I want to kill these players, right? Mighty blow is more chance of removing. I don't want to knock over a war dancer. I want to remove it. So, uh, yeah, I'm not such a fan of that. He's got two rerolls and an apple, which then lets him take the leader thrower which lets him squeeze in the troll as well. I'm not such a big fan of the troll either, but it is good in bash matchups. Uh, Rock won two, drew one, lost none. So undefeated there. And, oh yeah, he's up against Yatsuk, right? Yeah. Yatsuk, who's also Orcs, I believe. And... He also won, yeah, yeah, he won the uh, tiebreaker match, right? Versus Lepeg, I think. 2-2-0, two, two, undefeated so far. Four guard biggins, a tackler and a leader. Plus he's got, so again, he's got the same build to, to squeeze in the troll and three rerolls. Pretty nice. I can tell you that Jacek is Polish, qualified on PC through the season four official playoffs so i am going to pick yatsik to win that one um i think the extra guard is good and uh, obviously he's unbeaten you know he's the group group winner there so no it wasn't a group winner <laughs> he wasn't he was 2-1-0 and had to put two in a playoff i oh, know he's 1-2-0 in the playoff mm, okay so maybe rock the winner this is a tough one to call i'm going to go with yatsik i actually do quite rate yatsik i'm going to go with him as the winner and then we've got nuru versus spartacus I know that that's Undead versus Lizards, because on the draw, I thought Nuru was Orcs, because we just had <laughs> Orcs playing Orcs, and I was absolutely bamboozled. So, uh, yep, here we go. Undead, three guarders, tackle on the white, and then a block and a wrestle ghoul. So he's gone for skills on the mummies rather than the ghouls. That will help him maybe having some guard to fight lizard men, but... Uh, it's a funny game, honestly, Undead versus Lizards. He's won every game. Nuru's the only Bash coach to win every game. I think I think the interesting thing about the Bash teams is I think it was harder for them to qualify. Like, Well, harder for them to win the group, certainly. But they'll, I think they'll be a bit stronger in the knockout phase with you know draws being more acceptable and you know going to overtime in the deciding game and having more players. So... I think it was a bit of a risk, you know, taking a bash team, but it's worked out for him. He won every game easily. He's French. He qualified through Francobol, World to the World Cup. So, um, yeah, looking pretty strong. But Spartacus has really impressed me this tournament. Even though he finished second in his group, I, he, I thought he did some of the best plays. And he did, I thought he did the best one turn. And... Uh, <laughs> the funny thing is, he's he's got a, what I would call a terrible build, right? I, I think six block is the best build. I wouldn't consider taking a tackle. I wouldn't consider taking two guards instead of block. So, but he did use it really well, and in like fair play to him, you know, he's uh, he's done great so far. Two wins and a loss, and uh, yeah, very. I think he's played very impressively. But will will that build harm him at some point, right? I think. You know, eventually there's going to be a game where he's going to need more block and he's going to come unstuck because of it. In fact, the game he lost was because he had, he, he had one of his guarders got, um, you know, uphill blocked 
and there was a both down result there that he couldn't take. So, yep, Spartak because he's French, qualified through the season five official playoffs. So I'm gonna pick I'm gonna pick Spartacus to win that one, despite him being the runner-up and Nuru being the group winner. Wow, now what a matchup we've got here. Bright versus Andre. Bright um, is absolutely one of the super players that I would say. I would also say Andre is a super player. However, Andre chose Imperial Nobility, which is really gonna shoot him in the foot um, because Bright didn't take Imperial Nobility. He took Necromantic. However, he has taken the slightly weaker build. I prefer Andy Devil's build to the Russian build. Uh, Bright is Russian, he took the same build as Diamed, who is maybe maybe the pre-tournament favourite to win Diamed, but Bright is also very good. He qualified through Ruby VL. And uh, yep, this is pretty good, right? Pretty standard, four guard, and then three positionals. So normally that's two wolves and two or three block, and maybe a wrestle. Um, three re-rolls and normally you have 12 players but because he's downgraded a wolf to a ghoul he gets a 13th player which could matter in the overtime formats the problem is they're just as fragile as the two wolf build right so if you were getting like if you could get three ghouls and one wolf rather than two wolves and a ghoul i think it would be absolutely positively way stronger right but the fact that you still got three players you're completely reliant on i don't I think I prefer the Devo build, but um, you know he's really good player. Bright one two draw one, loss none, so very good. And funnily enough, Imperial and Ability are a little bit of a counter to um, Necro, so you know they've got Stand Firm and they've got Fen to counter the Wolves a little bit. Actually, really like I uh, say. As far as imperial and ability go, I really like Andre's build. This is what I built in the dark without playing the team. It was six guard, max guard, six guard, leader, couple of dodge. I, I actually really like this build. Dimmy kept telling me that you need a block ogre, and I disagree. I wanted six guard. Um, that's what Andre's gone with. He gets the third reroll because of the leader. The problem is after watching the games. They win games by just blitzing with the ogre every turn because it's all they've got that's good. <laughs> so actually, the more that now that I've seen them in action, I'm definitely inclined to agree a bit more with Dimmy that the block ogre is really good. But uh, he went two one one because he had to win a tiebreaker to qualify Andre, and he did win that tiebreaker, so he's in. But he's got knobs, and I've got to say I am definitely picking um, Bright to win that. And oh, also Andre is Spanish, qualified through the season three official playoffs. Right, uh, the last one for this quarter, or for this half actually. Oh, this is an interesting one. Zerples versus Ratamol. Um, so Zerples isn't actually in the tournament yet, but never fear. We can start off with Ratamol. So Ratamo is the other no another knob. He's got a really weird build. Really weird build. Uh, Mighty Blow, Blitzer, Tackle Blitzer, no dodge on those guys. Four guard, sure hands thrower, two dirty players, three re-rolls. Um, he's gone one 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 and qualified in second place. I'm not a big fan of the build, I've gotta be honest. Um, but he's up against Zerpils. Oh, <laughs> I should have said Ratamo, right? What's the background on Ratamo? He is Finnish and qualified through RPS Divisions of Death. I think that's Rock, Paper, Shotgun, isn't it? And Zerpils here is Austrian. No, he's German living in Austria. Qualified, oh, PlayStation, it says. B&T Road to the World Championship. Um, so, what's he got? He's got the Juggernaut. He's got the, oh, he's got Sprint instead of Sidestep. Yeah, I didn't like that. I didn't like that. But apart from that, four skills in the gutters. And he's given up the skill on the Blitzer. I, I think I like giving up the skill on the Blitzer the most for this. 
Um, and he won every game though. He's won every game in dominant fashion, Zerpils. So, you know, he's doing great so far. Um, yep. But I think this is a bit, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about this game. I'm not sure about this game. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Zerpils. Sorry. So, because because the thing <laughs> the thing is, um, you know, Ratamo's got the stand firm to stop the one turn, except it actually doesn't, right? Because um, they've got a juggernaut rat ogre, so it's just like it's kind of not as good as it could be. So that that half of the draw, uh, sorry, that quarter of the draw, we have seen one super player bright. So I'm going to back him to get to the for the semi-finals, right? There's uh, one super player in that group of eight. Right, next group of eight, and what a first round. This is the pick of the round, it's got to be. Nabolo versus Diomed. This is unbelievable. Let me get rid of these. Nabolo is the holder of the second highest unbeaten streak on tabletop of 56 games unbeaten on tabletop, which is pretty incredible. He's French, he qualified in PC through the Lutece Cup, and um, the stats is he won three games. Not only did he win three games, he caused he caused 13 casualties, it says 12 here, but I guess one was through a foul, and 10 touchdowns. So he's absolutely annihilated everything in his path. He's actually kept the mighty blow and on the Blitzer, of course, guard. And what has he given up? The thrower, he's given up the leader on the thrower, which means he's given up the Apothecary to keep three rerolls. So, it's a little bit more dicey in terms of removals, but the, the four are standard, the four gutter skills are standard, and the three bashy guys are standard. He's given up leader, and it has cost him the Apothecary, so, um, but he's got 13 players, you know, but so maybe, maybe he has opened himself up to the possibility of bad dice a little bit, um, which is not what you want. Um, like, you know, it, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, what can you say, right? Like, you're always going to be weak to dice somehow. And uh, you might also be a little bit weak to Diamond, obviously incredible player. He got to the final of the season two finals. Um, he is Russian, qualified through the Season 4 official playoffs, and he's got exactly the same build as Bright. We've already seen this exact same build, talked about it. He actually had a nightmare group, 1-1-1, one, 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 lost to Mr. Page, beat some Dark Elves, drew some Dark Elves, and uh, he was very nearly eliminated. Went through in second place, disaster for him. But, you know, I think he's a super player, and... Uh, yeah, this is going to be, that's, that's a very spicy match. That's going to be an incredible match. Um, of course, I have to pick Diamond as one of the super players. And then we've got Jonesy up against Allen76. Okay, bear with me. Jonesy's Dark Elves, I know that. He actually won the... Um, he won Diamond's group. They all won one, drew one, lost one in that group. So you can see there, one, one, one. Um, this build is a bit weird, isn't it? He didn't skill the Witch Elf, so he could take Tackle. And he's got the Leader Runner with two rerolls and an Apple. I'm not a big fan of this build, honestly. Um, I never considered anything like this for my Dark Elf build. But he's currently top of the math ladder, you know, we're getting the practice in, so getting the reps in certainly counts. He's German, qualified through DBBL. So, you know, fair fair play to Jonesy for this, but uh, I'm not a fan personally of the build. Uh, he's against Allen76, okay. I think Allen76 is PlayStation. I've got a feeling, yeah, PlayStation. Undead, and he qualified 201, and I believe he beat Dionlord, right? Which is how Dionlord ended up bottom of that group. 
Uh, Alan is from the UK and qualified in PlayStation Murder Bowl Gateway to Glory. And I'm not a fan of his build, I've got to say. <laughs> He's only got two ghouls. Two ghouls! He's got a strip ball white. This is very non standard. Very, very, very non standard. And then he's got three guard. So I guess he just didn't want, you know, unprotected ghouls. And then he got the, he got the fourth reroll in exchange for upgrading two players. But then he's taken three skeletons as well. I like. Hey, it's worked for him so far, but I am not a fan at all of the build. And purely for that, I have to pick against him and go for Jonesy. And then this is a couple of names. Everybody in the world knows Kfog. And Sergo also has a reputation. He is, he is good at Blood Bowl. And he's taken a very strange team, Sergo. Um, he's taken Orcs. And it's a very interesting build. So I can tell you that Sergo is Spanish and he qualified through the Season 4 official playoffs. And boy how does he got a lot of block. He's taken five blocks in one mighty blow. And Kfog has got Wood Elves. So like having loads of block is pretty good, right? You can hunt down the Elves, base them up to death. You know, he'll hope that Kfog can't make the hits. And then he'll get loads of hits with block, loads of knockdowns. And it'll give him a chance. So it's actually one of the better teams to run into with like no guard at all. Uh, three rerolls, Apo, and he didn't win a game. <laughs> I remember this was a this was a mad group. I remember the group. The uh, the other two people were orcs. The, the the third and fourth were orcs. They played each other. The winner progressed, and they no no it was orcs and undead. The, the bottom two were orcs and undead. They played each other. Whoever wins qualifies. Or, you know, they could draw 1-1 one, one, and then they drew 0-0. Nil, nil. They actually managed to basically... They basically colluded to eliminate themselves. Neither of them, neither of them qualified with a 0-0 nil, nil draw. And they qualified 0-0. Nil, nil. The orcs were very close to winning. Couldn't get over the line. And then, amazingly, um, Sergal qualified on without winning a game. He's in there. And the, <laughs> the person he has to play against is maybe the best player in the world. Everybody loves him. He's a giant, lovely fella. It's Kfog. And I really like what he's done with the team. He's maxed out on dodge almost. Nine dodge players, two wrestle players. He's, hasn't, he's gone without the tree, right? By not taking the tree, this lets him take this roster exactly. Uh, three rerolls, Apple, four catches. And then the skills all go on linemen to get them loads of dodge. Yeah, as I say, nine dodge altogether. And then he's got the strip ball and the sidestep. I really do prefer sidestep the tackle. Maybe not on tabletop. Because, uh, you know, there's Amazons exist on tabletop. But overall, I think it's a great shout to go sidestep on the war dancer. Um, he actually won one, drew two, lost none. Um, so, you know, and, and the reason that he took this team, he said, was just, you know, Waddell's are really hard to beat. And I didn't think about that, but it's really true, isn't it? You know, like, if, if he can win the first game, like... If you try to beat him, he'll just two turn or three turn. Like Wood Elves, they have got one turn as well. And I didn't really think of that. You know, I was thinking, look, Dark Elves are hard to beat. I can get diced and not get removed. So I can, you know, not remove too badly. Even if I do get removed too badly, I'm Elves. So I really like Dark Elves for not getting diced out of the games. But then I didn't think of the, the two turn, the one turn and the two turn touchdowns, how effective. Um, what else are at winning games just because people don't try to beat you <laughs> is the thing right so yeah that's pretty good for him and there's one more it's Niagara versus Ivan Colin right oh and I should say Kfog apologies um, he qualified he's Danish and he qualified through the season 5 official playoffs Niagara is Swedish and qualified through the BBT Blood Bowl Tactics Big Crunch Playoff. And uh, he's got Wood Elves. He's gone for the more standard tree build. He's used a double to take Mighty Blow on the Dancer rather than Sidestep. Uh, so he's given up Sidestep on the Dancer and Wrestle on a Lino to get Mighty Blow. It's pretty good, right? It can win you some games. This is a more standard build. Um, 
the mighty blow can definitely dice people two zero one. And at the end of the day, when people are like pretty good at blood bowl, you know, if they're if they're pretty very similar skill levels, the best way to beat somebody is just by rolling better dice than them, right? So that seems a pretty good thing to have, you know, like giving yourself that chance, another chance to dice somebody is really powerful. Up against Ivan Colin with Orcs, he's gone for the four Gar Biggins, a mighty blower tackler, so pretty standard, but again, I'm not a fan of the tackle, you know, even though it may get some use in this match. And he's won 2 1 0, so nice record, especially for a second place finisher. This isn't going to be easy by any means for Niaga, um, but. You know, I have to. I have to pick. I have to pick the one with the Wood Elves in this match. Ivan Colin is Spanish, qualified through NBB. Right, and then that concludes that little group of eight. And in that little group of eight, the super players we have are Diamond and K Fog. So they're and they're actually both on track to both make the quarterfinals. And what a quarterfinal that could be, uh, Diamond versus K Fog. So yep, uh, they are my picks. For that little bracket, you'll notice that I haven't, you know, you haven't seen two of maybe the bigger names in Blood Bowl, <laughs> certainly on Twitch and YouTube, is which is myself and Andy Devo, and what a fantastic event this is because <laughs> I'm not bitter at all. Funnily enough, if I won my group, I'd be playing Devo in the first round. How crazy is that? Instead, I didn't win my group. Truk won my group. And here is Truk, uh, I can tell you, I'm pretty sure he's qualified through Rebel. He's, Ch he's from Chile, uh, and he qualified on PC through Rebel. He's got three guard, he's got a blocker, he's got a wrestle ghoul, and he's got a dirty player skeleton. I actually hate skeletons, <laughs> especially when you put a skill in him, when you could have put that skill on a ghoul. He's also only got three ghouls, that's allowed him to go to 14th player. Not a fan of his build, honestly. He won two, drew one. Um, he did top my group. Uh, I did, I feel like I've got very bad dice two of those games. But um, yeah, you know, this, it's okay, right? And he, play, he played fine and everything, but I just can't see him beating Andy Devo over a best of two or three situation. This is pretty much the standard, what I would call the standard necromantic build. You've got four guard, you've got both walls. You've got all block. It's a little bit fragile. The thing going against this is it's a little bit fragile with only three players that can, you know, handle the ball effectively. So he is prone to getting diced out for this team. Um, it's possible. It's possible. And you know, Truk has the uh, dirty player to foul him if if something happens. So Devo could get unlucky with this. I can tell you that Andy Devo is obviously British and qualified through the NAF. Blood Bowl 3 Summer Qualifier, he won that. Um, so yeah, that's a good team, obviously great player. So I'm definitely gonna pick Andy Devo to win that game. And then the other game, <laughs> funnily enough, is uh, myself. So there you go. Let me uh, find Gogo Bay, who won his group. And uh, there we go. He's taken. He's taken what I think is maybe the better dark elf build. <laughs> he's got three re rolls. He's got an apothecary. He's got the assassin. He's got the wrestle witch elf. He's got four bludgers. This is Christopher Bengston's build. It's Gogo -Go Bear's build. I really like the build. Um, he's won two, lost one. Topped his group. He he was lucky enough to get the imperial nobility group so you know he had that going for him but yeah I really like the build I think it's great and uh, I'm not too happy to be facing him to be honest I mean the thing was you know I think the uh, I think the group winners were overall better than the group runs up which you'd kind of expect right but I think I think they were a bit better than I thought they were obviously better and worse players you know in terms of racial matchup and personal opinion of how good they have played but Gogo Bay is Canadian, qualified through G O B B L N. Um, yeah, so I'm not. I wasn't too happy about this. There were definitely easier matches I could have got. And uh, here is my team, Dark Elves. 
I went for more safety, right? It was trying to not get diced. I was like, don't get diced, don't get diced. Let's go 12 players so that my apple, you know, I didn't want my apple to not work, right? So let's go 12 players, so we've definitely got that. Two re-rolls is a little bit tight. You know, I'd much prefer to have three re-rolls, but I've got six, like, super safe players, so that I've got less chance of getting, you know, banged out by just random people dicing me. I've got more block and blodge and rodge. So, um... Yeah, I just went for like kind of safe, safe delves as as safe as I could go, and uh, they were pretty safe, right? They won one, they drew two. Even though I got diced twice, in my opinion, uh, not diced, but I got diced in one of them. The other one, I, I dodged twice with the ball carrier and failed both of them, right? If I had made either of those dodges, I win that game, and uh, so I was very close to winning my group. But um, you know, and then I got lucky in the other game. To be fair, I definitely got lucky in the third game that I had to win. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's that one. I, I'm going to pick him to win because honestly, yeah, it's, it's a, it's an elf mirror and it's absolutely not easy. And, uh, you know, he's done well to get there and stuff and better to pick against yourself anyway, isn't it? If you can, <laughs> right. Let's have a look at the next one, which is Lamar Zalea versus Serafino. Oh, I should also say how I qualified, right? Obviously I'm English. And I qualified through the Blood Bowl Super League, you know, which is a collection of very super players. And uh, I am, um, I, I consider them the, the best of the best and I won that. So I was very happy that I won who I consider the best of the best competition. I thought it was a very, very good way to qualify. Um, right, Le Marcelet is French, surprisingly enough, qualified through the season five official playoffs. And he's got a, another Wood Elf team. He's gone same as Kfog, no tree. However, he has taken the thrower to get the leader rather than taking. Also, oh, what? No, no, I'll tell you what he's done. Rather than taking the apothecary, <laughs> he is. Rather than taking an apothecary and a reroll, which is 100, he's taken the thrower and given him leader. And the throw is like 95, right? So I think this is bad and I prefer KFOG's build. Definitely. Because then that means KFOG gets the extra dodge on the lineman, right? And he's taken tackle and strip, a bit more standard taking the tackle. Um, it's certainly not a bad build. Lamar's is a great player. He actually topped Andy Davo's group with two wins. He lost to Davo though. And I do think um, Necro favoured versus Wood Elves, funnily enough. Um, so, yeah, it's it's interesting. Definitely a good player, but um, he's got a Wood Elf mirror, which is up against Serafino. You can see there he's got a tree with grab. This is this is a weird old one. This is pretty one turn focused. He's got a grab tree. He's got a sprint catcher. And he's got a frenzy dancer, so it's pretty one turn vote. It's pretty non standard. Um, he's got no dodge linemen. He's got two wrestle linemen, but no dodge linemen at all. So, yeah, strange build. Uh, I'm actually not a fan of the build. But, you know, again, like, look, obviously he is right. He's a good player. He likes the build. Um, you know, <laughs> is what it is, right? But I'm not a fan. I'm going to pick Lamar's to win that one. And then the final match, which is happening quite soon in real life. It's Olivier Dulac versus Jay Leaf. And uh, let me show you Olivier Dulac. Surprise, it's not rats. He did not take rats. Unbelievably, he took wood elves and he took a jump up on the tree. How weird. What a weird skill. That's two skills he's given up to take that. Very, very, very strange. Um, because he's done, and because he's taken this build with four catches, I like four catches, but that means he's only got two re-rolls. Of course, he's got the Apo. He's taken Strip and Frenzy, and he's, so he's got no dodge on the lineman, but he, again, he does have the extra catches compared to most normal builds. Um, and he's got two sidesteppers. What's interesting is the sidesteppers combined with the tree makes him basically immune to one turns, right? Which is very nice, you know, he's obviously, this is great one turn defense, having two sidesteppers. And also he uses it well in the game, like these sidesteppers can occupy 
key positions. It's been it's been good to watch him. Honestly, very played the team very well as you would expect. Because if you don't know, Olivier Dulac is the number one rated player in the world on math style with Skaven. He's won every game there easily. And uh, oh, I didn't say how Serafino's qualified, did I? Sorry, Serafino's Italian qualified through Wild Thing Studio. Um, Olivier Dulac is as you'd expect French. Qualified through Vent Des Gobs. I will never get bored of saying it that way because it's funny. And uh, yeah, so not really a big fan of his build. Honestly, not a big fan of his build um, because of the jump up tree. I think if that's two dodge linos, I like his build. It's only the jump up tree I don't like, but I actually quite like this double sidestep thing. And then with the frenzy as well, that increases his one turn, right? He's got good one turning with two sidesteppers and a frenzy. So yeah, pretty nice from Olivier Dulac. And he's up against Jay Leave, who, uh, <laughs> you know, bless his cotton socks. He qualified somehow <laughs> from his group. Um, he did great for All World Alliance. <laughs> he won one game, lost two. And how the hell did that finish second, you're asking yourself? It's because Miss Beltree and Piebot also won one, lost two. They all beat each other and they all lost to Strider. Strider dominated the group. And... Uh, you know, honestly, what he's got going for him in this match versus Olivia is at least he's the Bash team versus the Agility team, right? I feel like all the lines versus other Bash teams just lose because they're a bit rubbish. Um, but versus Agility teams, you know, maybe they can beat up their opponent and, you know, you know, jam in, make them roll dice, just win like a normal game of Blood Bowl. Um, and, you know, he did do that versus Miss Bell Tree and... Uh, yeah, it's he can he can do it again. He can beat Olivier Dulac, of course he can. He's got an ogre with block, which is uh, pretty good, isn't it? That's your main strategy: just blitz with block, mighty blow every turn, and hope for the best. Tackle blitzer, block thrower, block catcher, mighty blow slayer, three guards, a wrestle, two halflings. I I mean I hate the build because it's all world alliance. Uh, yes, he gets lots of gold to spend. Yes, he gets lots of skills. But All World Alliance are a really bad team. Really, really, really bad team. I, I cannot overstate how bad they are. I got the giggles. I, I didn't know how to play against All World Alliance, right? So I, I, did, I had some practice games for my game versus the All World Alliance in the group stage. And every time I, I had three practice games and I literally got the giggles every time I played just because they were so bad. They were just laughably bad. And then, of course, when I played the proper game, I took like seven Kaz and lost easily. So there you go. I well, didn't lose. I drew. I drew. Brilliant. But should have lost easily. Um, right. So, Jay Leave um, is from the United States of America and qualified through the totally relaxed Blood Bowl League because he's the tryhardiest man in Blood Bowl and he found the perfect league to qualify from. <laughs> so there you go. I've got to pick Olivier Delac to win that, even though Jay Leave does have an avenue of victory at his disposal. And in this little quarter of the bracket, there are three super players. So there you go. Jimmy absolutely screwed on that and uh, might not even get past the first round. Honestly, that's a tough first round, I think. So, yep, yeah, I'm going to pick... I'm honestly going to pick Dave O to get through. I, th I think I quite fancy Necro versus Wood Elves and uh, I'm not such a fan of Olivier's build. So I'm going to pick Dave O to get through from that little quarter. And that concludes my little look at all the 32 teams that are left in the competition and predictions for, you know, who's going to do what through each quarter of the bracket. And, uh, yeah, and then if we get there... Who do we see winning? Well, let's say Strider. Mm, I'm, I'm going to fancy Strider to get through at the final. And let's say it's Strider versus K-Fog. A Wood Elf mirror in the final. That's very possible. And then maybe K-Fog to win. I'm a big fan of K-Fog. Love the guy. Love his playing Blood Bowl. So, love his build. So, there you go. Um, that's that. And uh, that's that. I'm going to be casting all these games live if I can, replays if I can't. What I'll try and do is, uh, there's going to be a lot of games played at the same time and stuff. I'll try to at least play the deciding games live if possible. Like if there's a clash, I'll try and do like deciding games. And if the third game is, is required, I'll prioritize casting those live. Um, 
so yeah that that's it this is this is the competition um thanks for watching everybody don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic